everybody out there in show business world, I'm Vivian Reed, and I'm here to talk to you about show business and my beginnings. Now, before we get started, I want to tell you what you're seeing here in the background. These are clothes, scarves and ponchos, glam ponchos, from my VJR scarves and glam ponchos line. You can find them on Etsy, but we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about show business. So here we go. All right. My mother and father told me that I was making, let me get my shoulder down. You know, I like my shoulder showing. My mother and father told me that I was making melodious tones at three years old. Honey. I don't remember no melodious tones at three years old. I can't even remember the movie I saw last night. Nevertheless, <laughs> that's what they told me. And so at the age of six, they took me to a place called Pittsburgh Musical Institute where we met a lady by the name of Mrs. Romaine Russell. Now, Mrs. Russell listened to me sing. I don't know what I could have been singing then. Maybe Jesus loves me. This I know, no. I probably wasn't singing it like that. Let me see. Jesus loves me. This I know. Maybe more like that. Anyway, <laughs> so when I finish, she said to my parents, she said, well, your daughter is talented. You know, she's gifted, but she's too young to, to start voice lessons. So bring her back in a couple years. So in two years, my mother took me back to the Pittsburgh Musical Institute and I started studying with Mrs. Romaine Russell. Mrs. Russell was a wonderful, wonderful teacher. Everything was going great until one day, I don't know what possessed me and my buddy Iris to do this, but one day, honey, me and Iris, we in the schoolyard, right, acting up, doing something. And this man was smoking, so we went up to him to ask him for a cigarette. And like a nut, he gave it to us. I mean, he had to realize that we were only about 11 or 12. Come on now. Anyway, <laughs> we asked him for a cigarette, and he gave it to us and even lit us up. So, child, let me tell you. That first puff nearly killed us. The second puff was a little easier, and the third puff, we were hooked. Now, I know you probably said, you used to smoke what? Yes, I used to smoke. I know, I know, I know. It was terrible, terrible, terrible. And it did have problems with my vocal because, I mean, I went through hell. I really, really did. And I'm going to tell you about that later. But right now, let's just stick to the problem at hand when me and I started smoking. So now, back at my voice lesson, I finished singing this song, right? This aria, whatever I was singing. And Mrs. Russell said, Vivian, I smell cigarette smoke. And I said, no, no, Mrs. Russell, no, 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 it's not me, not me. It, it has to be somebody else. It wasn't me. She looked at me as if I had two heads. And I'm thinking, she must have been thinking, this girl must really, really think I'm dumb. So she said to me, okay, Vivian. She said, you don't want to admit to it, but I'm going to tell you, you won't see any problems with your voice while you're young, but when you get older, you're going to have a lot of trouble singing songs. Just like she called it, ladies and gentlemen, just like she called it. That's how it happened. I ended up having many problems. Thought I was losing my voice, but losing my voice was because of acid reflux. We're going to talk about smoking and acid reflux later. But right now, let's get back to the 12 years old and all of that. So now, I'm smoking, smoking, smoking. When my parents found out, they were very upset, so I would go sneak off somewhere and smoke. Anyhow, by the time I turned 13, I could sing in three languages, Italian, German, and French. And I also had several arias under my belt, like uh, Visi d'Arte. Oh, Lord, I can't believe I can still do that. Well, to an extent, I don't know how good that is, but I can still do something like that. Anyway, so 
And there was Un Bel D and and uh, Quando Min Vo. I knew all the songs, child. It was wonderful. And she was a wonderful teacher. Now, at the beginning of the senior year, a lady suggested to my mother that she try to get me an audition for Juilliard School of Music in New York. So my mother made a few phone calls, and we went off to New York to audition. Child, that audition, it was hard. I had to sing several arias, Italian art songs, all kinds of songs in different languages. And of course, you know, I had to get my Negro spirituals in. After all, I am black. Now, what spirituals were I, was I singing back then? I think Roll, Roll Jordan, Roll, and Ride on King Jesus. There were a bunch. Anyway, so I got a scholarship to Juilliard. They accepted me. And it was okay. In the beginning, well, the first teacher I was with, he died. And then the second teacher, well, she tried to change my voice. I had this big, warm, rich voice. And child, she tried to thin my sound out. I said, oh, hell no, you're not thinning out my sound. This is the voice that God gave me. And you're not doing that. Of course, I didn't say that to her, but this is what I'm thinking. So I dropped her ass like a hot potato. Then the third teacher, child, all he wanted to do was talk about Florence Henderson. I said, okay, this man really isn't interested in teaching me as a, a, as a vocal major. He wants to talk about Florence Henderson, so I dropped him too and ended up with the teacher who remained with me until I got out of Juilliard. Now, when I got to Juilliard, it was kind of weird now. Don't forget now, I'm smoking all the time. I had been smoking. It was funny though because all these voice majors were walking around Juilliard, and when you would talk to them, they would speak with these, especially the women, in these very rounded tones and everything very front, as it should be. Uh, like, I'll give you an example. Hi, Vivian. So nice to see you today. Don't you look nice? And, of course, me. I, oh, thank you, girl. You look good, too. Mm -hmm. There was nobody like me roaming those halls of Juilliard School of Music. I was so different. Anyhow, now. Let's talk about these two guys that worked in the mailroom at Juilliard. Bob and Moses, two gay guys. So they come up to me one day and they said, listen, Vivian, we're going to take you up to this club, nightclub called Pauline's Interlude. Pauline's Interlude. So I'm raring to go. So we go up there. Now, before we went in, they said, now, Vivian, everybody in here is gay. It's mostly men, and they all gay. Baby, when we opened up that door, and I saw all them fine men. I mean fine. But I had to remember they all gay. <laughs> so went on in. Now, there were some women, a lot of women who patronized the club. And most of these women were straight. A few lesbians, but most of the women were straight. So we went in there, and what a great atmosphere. My first nightclub, okay? So we're sitting in the booth. And what was so interesting about this club is that every 30 minutes or so, the two bartenders and the singing hostess would break out into song. Oh, this was wonderful because, above all else, they were singing classical music. So I was in seventh heaven. I was loving all of this. Now, Mrs. Josephine Cooper, now she was a singing hostess. She came over to the table and she introduced herself. And she says, young lady, I hear that you're a singer going to Juilliard. And I said, yes, ma'am. So she said, well, would you like to go up and sing something for us? So I thought, well, I do know, and this is my beloved from Kismet. And she said, oh, that's good, that's good. Well, go up and introduce yourself to Mr. Arthur Bowie, he was the organist, and tell him what you're gonna sing. So I go on up there, introduced myself and told him, I asked him if he knew, and this is my beloved from Kismet, and he did, and I told him the key I was singing it in. Well, let me tell you, I started singing this song, and every time I would hit a high note, they would go, Woo! Yes, honey, sing! This was really good. I was excited. Nothing like that had ever happened. I mean, you don't get that in classical music as a concert artist. You're standing up in the, the crook of the piano, and you're like this, and hands clasp in front of you, and you're very regimented, and everything is just so strict and contained. 
Not that it shouldn't be. I mean, it's looser now today. But I'm not making fun of that. I'm just telling you how it was back then. And this was something different. Oh, I loved it. And when I finished singing, they, oh, thunderous applause. I was so happy. So I go back to the table. Mrs. Cooper came over to me and she says, young lady, how would you like to replace me? I'm going away on a voyage and I'm going to be gone for a few weeks. I would love for you to replace me. Well, I thought about this and I said, yes, thinking to myself, hell yes. I mean, this was great. So I replaced her. Now, let me tell you about Miss Josephine Cooper. Stay down there. I have never really heard a singer do some of the things she did at the ends of phrases. Like for instance, she would like scoop her notes. Let me give you an example. Summertime. I said, what the hell? And the living is easy. Child, I have heard nobody sing like that. I mean, scooping those notes like that. Are you kidding? I would kill my students if they did something like that. Anyway, but you know what? She was a fabulous, fabulous performer. And that was just her style. That was her thing. And you know what? The people who patronized the place, they loved her. Anyway, so I did end up uh, filling in for her for several weeks. And, and uh, let me tell you this. It was illegal, honey, because I was underage. Because back then, and I think it's still today, I'm not sure, you had to be 21. Well, they didn't ask, and I didn't tell. So I worked there, and what a learning experience that was. Now, all of this time, I'm sharing the fact that I'm going to replace this woman or, or fill in for her at Pauline's. And I shared this with my teacher, Juilliard. Well, child, I thought I was going to have to put his ass in intensive care. He had a fit. What? You're doing what? You're singing what? And where is this? I was still going to be singing classical music. I think it was the fact that it was at a nightclub. I don't know what the problem was. And then when I got a job to work at for summer stock at Green Mansions in the Adirondack Mountains, I shared that with him. And again, he had a hissy, smith, a hissy fit. So I'm saying, this is ridiculous. Why is he acting like this? But you know what? Back then, and I understand that it sort of lasted for years, Juilliard was very strict about if you're singing classical music, that's what you should be singing. You should not be singing anything else. They were staunch believers in the fact that you're a classical singer, you should stay a classical singer. Well, needless to say, I knew my days were going to be numbered. And especially when I took that job at uh, Green Mansions and my teacher actually found out who the director was and told the director not to hire me. So the director called me and says, listen, we don't care what your teacher says and what he's asking us to do. Do you want the job? Yes or no? And of course, I took the job. And that was the beginning of the downhill slide at Juilliard. So after Juilliard, I wanted to venture into other kinds of music. So that's going to be in the next part. That was a journey unto itself. And bear in mind, I was still smoking. See you in the next part.